Mariners going to make their way out of Ford Stadium in front of a record crowd with a 41 to 24 win over SMU. We learned something tonight about ourselves. We learned. Well, Coach Jones is good about that. You know, when he talked to the kids after the game, he said, "Guys, I." Uh, I know uh, how bad this one hurts. Let's lick our wounds for a couple of days. But when we come back to work, now we're focusing on what we set out to in August, and that's to win a conference championship. The 41-24 loss was disappointing. But the Mustangs showed plenty for fans to be excited about. Zach Line gave the standout performance with his second 100-yard game, finishing with 139 yards on 17 carries and scoring two touchdowns. Sterling Moore had another great game, igniting the sellout crowd, which wasn't sure the star cornerback would play after suffering an early-season knee injury. And a Mustang player hurt is that Sterling Moore it is and he throws his helmet off as he rides in pain on the near sideline at the five. Uh, against UAB, my kneecap slipped out. Basically uh, slipped out to the outside and came back in. When that happens, you get uh, some tearing of the fibers uh, on the inside of the patella. You get a lot of swelling. Um, not necessarily immediately, but the next day he came in, knee was huge. Uh, when you get a lot of swelling in the knee, the quad shuts down, and that's where your problems come. Uh, basically, right now I'm just doing um, my quad set, which is I'm trying to fire and activate my quad. Uh, so I'm trying to get that to fire because that's really what holds the knee, the knee in place. So um, trying to get that, and then you know I'm gonna get my knee, get my heel slides in. That's just getting my range of motions. The, the first thing you have to do is you have to get rid of the swelling, otherwise the quad shuts down. So we push, you know, push the swelling out. Um, we did various different cold and compression therapies on that. Instead of icing, it just does pretty much the same thing. It drops down to like 37 degrees. But uh, it's a big thing. I'm on it every day just to get the swelling out because it compresses it and puts pressure on it as it's, as it's cold. So I don't know, whatever works, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> whatever gets me back out there. <laughs> Sterling couldn't play in the victory over Washington State, but he made his presence felt on the sideline. Washington's tough, it's, especially at the beginning of the game, and when it's a close game, you're like, man, I want to be out there. Uh, so, ah, it, it, it kind of eats at you while you're on the sideline. But, you know, once they, as we started to get a lead and we started to win, you know, you, you kind of settle down and be like, okay, you know, they can go out there and they can handle it, you know, because you, you feel, always feel like you want you can go out there and contribute. He's doing well, so the thing is now we've got to keep the swelling out and keep his quad strong and keep him in the brace to keep it from shifting back out. Sterling's commitment to rehab only had him walking the sidelines for one game, and TCU was plenty of motivation to get back on the field. You know, I had a good feeling in warm-ups that I was going to be out there and, and my knee felt good and it wasn't going to swell back up. So when I go in there and the doctor, he's playing around with my knees, asking me, does this hurt, does that hurt? And then he measures the swelling and he's like, okay, you're good to go. You know, I, I, I immediately jumped off the table and said, I got to go, you know. So it was definitely exciting. It was one of those games that you really get amped up for, especially with it being a rival game and against the number four team in the nation at the time. So it, it's something you definitely get amped up for. Uh, I, I think the keys are making sure you're in good shape coming into the season so that when you do get nicked up, because it's inevitable, you're going to get nicked up, that you can bounce back from it quickly. And then doing the things, getting the right amount of rest, hydrating, eating properly, putting the good stuff into your bodies so that you can you know, rebuild and, and, and bounce back. This week, Sterling leads SMU into an important conference game against the Rice Owls. Expectations are high as SMU hopes to end a 24-year losing streak at Rice Stadium. Black nine, black nine, that's the audible, here we go. He knows what the goal and objective was. He clearly stated and broke down the season into quarters way back in August and said at the end of our first four games, we can be no worse than two and two. He expected us to be three and one. Four and O's a chance if we do everything right. Obviously the first game against Tech, we hurt ourselves with turnovers. This last game against TCU, we're hanging in there, we lose momentum, we give up a big kickoff return, and we just aren't clicking on all cylinders in all three phases. These next two games will define our season. Uh, we, we have to go one and one, 
There's no reason why we can't go 2-0. and And if we go 2-0, and win on the road in the conference, we'll be in a good position to, to reach our goal of trying to be the conference champion. Up next on The Climb, Margus Hunt's unusual journey from international track and field champion to the football field. Defensive end Margus Hunt's path to American football is far from typical. A multi-sport athlete from Estonia, Hunt is an internationally known discus and shot put star. He ascended to the world stage in 2006 when he set the world junior record in the discus at the World Junior Championships in Beijing. He won the gold in both discus and shot put in Beijing, earning Estonia its first world junior gold medals. He's the only athlete to ever win the gold in both events. He made his way to SMU to train with world-renowned track and field coach Dave Woolman. Uh, my former athlete and SMU alum Alexander Tamer reaches out to me and tells me this young guy from Estonia, he's 6'8", 260 pounds, he wants to come to SMU. After, after I got here, after I saw this campus, all the facilities, and when I saw Dallas, I mean, I saw my future here, and uh, I wanted to come here for sure after like a couple days. Even without a men's track program, Margus wanted to continue training with Coach Woolman, but securing a scholarship was the only way he could remain at SMU. Uh, I took the shot to come here. Uh, I had the budget only for one year to come here on my own. And uh, after, after that year, we found out that, you know, they're not going to bring the track and field program back. The Estonian government was going to take away his funding for his scholarship, so Dave asked me uh, whether I'd be interested in taking a look at Margus uh, for the football team. And I said, certainly. I'd had some success with guys that had never played before, but his athleticism was like second to, to nobody. Well, since we didn't have any other choice and I wanted to stay at SMU, why not give it a try, you know, why not give it a shot? June Jones and his staff had little hesitation awarding this world-class athlete the scholarship he needed, something very rare for a player who'd never played the game. Well, I knew very little. Uh, I didn't know even the rules. I didn't know what the game was even about. Just watching his body language and watching, like, and going through the plays, like, he didn't really know what he was doing. Like, the, the ball would be snapped and he would stand up and just look around. Like, he did he really had no clue. I think I learned the majority of rules in a movie called The Longest Yard. <laughs> the first time in pads, uh, that was kind of funny, you know, I didn't know how to put on those pads that well and put the jersey on the pads and all, all that kind of stuff. You could see that the talent was there. It was just a matter of how fast could we develop the talent, how fast would he pick it up, and could he handle it when he got into live situations. There was a lot of things that we had to figure out. Well, like everyone was saying, like, geez, what is, what is Coach Jones doing? And just like letting this guy be on the team he's never played before. But he got the techniques down uh, really, really quickly. So I was trying to be uh, very cautious as to how I introduced him to the contact phase of it. And uh, we happened to be on the field one day, this was during spring football, when he caught a face full of face mask. I mean, the guy hit him pretty hard with a helmet. And I was standing back there at that time, and I thought to myself when that happened, I said, that's it. That, that hit right there, I mean, he's, he's probably done because it jarred him pretty, pretty good. But he stood up, he, he shook it off, and he got back down in the drill. And once that happened, I said, we got us a player. Let's go. There you go. That's okay. I don't want to react to him. After I got my first, like, little uh, bump or little hit, like, in pads, I, I started, like, really enjoying it. I was like, okay, can we do this again? You know, it was, it was, really, it was really fun. The coach's gamble paid off as Margus quickly became a special team standout, setting an SMU record with seven blocked kicks in the 2009 season. It kind of like, you know, started like uh, piling up this emotion that, you know, we're going to go hard every time, you know, no matter what. If we can take points off their, off their board, if it's either one point or three point, you know, we're going to definitely try and do that. Why is he still good at blocking field goals? Because uh, his arm is like five feet long. I don't know. He uh, has a unique way of turning, getting his body skinny, getting through people at the same time, driving forward with force. 
And I think the thing that sets him apart from other people is hand-eye coordination. Actually following the football is what really, I think, makes him unique and sets him apart. After the East Carolina game, everyone at the stadium, when they were having a field goal, everyone was like standing up and like screaming that block that kick, you know? It was, uh, it was pretty funny. Margus earned the respect of his teammates with success on the field and an impressive work ethic, helping him to fit in well off the field as well. He puts on this big image of Wolfman and the big scary tattoo, but he's a big goofball. Two, two antennas got married last, last week. The wedding was lame, but the reception was excellent. <laughs> no, he's, okay, he's Marks is always, always cracking jokes in practice. Um, he's a pretty pleasant person to be around. He's goofy, he's European, so, you know. I'm pretty sure Marcus learned all about American culture by watching South Park. He's addicted to that show. He has a whiteboard in his room right above his desk. All it says is, new South Park episode, October 6th or whatever. To a man, the coaches and players at SMU understand and appreciate Marcus Hunt's impact on the football program. Being a, a track athlete, you're an individual sport, and he'd never been in a locker room, never been around the guys, and be a part of, of a team spirit. And uh, I think that if you ask him, I think he'll probably say he enjoyed that the most. He got it on Wikipedia. And he got you on Wikipedia? <laughs> Estonia.com. <laughs> well, he's more of like a quiet leader. He leads by example and just expressing his words and like in saying stuff to people. Like if it needs to be said, then he'll come out and say, like, come on, we need to work hard and get, get our stuff together and do what Coach said to do. He's a coach's dream. If you could have 10 of those, he might win a national championship. I think he has the potential to be a really good player. Uh, he'll have the opportunity if he keeps working and keeps advancing on the course that he's on to probably play at the next level. Yeah, I think this guy's only been playing football for a year and a half, so you think, wow, you know, I guess a couple years under his belt, who knows how good he can be. He's living a glorious life. He, he's got a, he's going to an amazing university, getting a great education. He's got it all, and he's playing a game that he's passionate about, and, and everybody that surrounds him is supportive of him. So uh, he's really living the dream right now. When we come back, Sifu just might be the key to success on the road.